Good morning, crafty friends. Hello and happy Tuesday. Welcome to Tea Time. Who's excited to be here today? I am. <laughs> I am so happy to be able to uh, join you guys every Tuesday. Maybe some of you saw me yesterday. If you are one of our Stamp Joy virtual participants this spring, then I did a special live yesterday to walk through the uh, supply list for our event before your shopping discount period started today. I know many of you have been getting those orders in. It started at 9 a.m., that discount code. So uh, if you are among those people, raise your hand. Did you get an order in today already? Or maybe you're waiting until the live to see what's also new um, at Tailored Expressions today. So um, yeah, I'm excited to share a few new things with you. And then we're gonna have lots of time to craft together because our release today is not huge. Um, it's pretty concise. We are uh, releasing some craft room essentials, a few desktop decor items to brighten your space, hopefully make you smile while you're crafting, and some useful things as well. So as you are hopping on today, if you haven't already left me a comment, then say hello. I would uh, love to chat with you guys. Hello, Susan in South Carolina. Anne Marie is here. Hello, Holly. You ordered from your son's speech therapy appointment. I love that. Multitasking, right? Hi, Bonnie. <laughs> Good to see you, Deb. And Shelly's here today from Greenfield, Wisconsin. Hello, Peggy. You got your order in. That's good. Rachel's here. Hi, Nina and Linda and Rita and Lori. Another Linda. And of course, Sally's here. Well, good to see all of you guys joining in today. And if you are new to the Tuesday Lives, then welcome. I hope you'll feel comfortable and leave us a comment and say hello, maybe even say first time watcher. Um, I love to converse with everyone while we are doing these lives, so I don't feel like I'm just talking into a screen. So seeing your comments makes me smile and uh, makes this even more fun for me. So uh, feel free to chat with each other, or if I'm asking questions, you can respond with your answers as well. So, all right, should we get into it today? Like I said, it is not a very big release today. We are mostly focusing on our Stamp Joy participants and their supply shopping. So if you're not attending Stamp Joy, um, it might look kind of small to you, but for those attending Stamp Joy are also purchasing the supplies that they might want to use in their classes and Saturday sessions. So lots of stuff happening at Tailored Expressions today in addition to the new products we have. So I'm gonna put a graphic up on the screen so you guys can see what these craft room essentials look like. I know we all like to beautify our space. And of course, if you know me and you've known me for very long, you know that rainbow is one of my favorite ways to beautify my space. And so we have some fun things for you um, in your craft room that we hope you will enjoy as much as I love having these in my craft room. So we have some stickers, posters, uh, a fun journal that we're gonna talk about, a new cleaning cloth to uh, show you guys. So let's get started looking at what we have for you today. I'm gonna move my card samples out of the way. And I do have to say that the projects we're creating today really don't have anything to do with the desktop essentials that we are uh, releasing, but I will be using a few of those as I craft with you. But one of my favorite parts of these type of lives when we don't have new products like uh, card making products to release is I get to pick one of my favorites and uh, re-explore it. So sometimes we have big releases where I don't get to use all of the items in the release and so I get to come back to them later or maybe I had a favorite that I wanted to explore again. So that's what we're gonna be doing and crafting a little bit later. But let's start by going through the items in this little craft room essentials desktop decor release. Um, I'm going to talk about the stickers first. We like to uh, we like a little bit of um, humor here at Tailored Expressions. So uh, this sticker is humorous. It says "How I Buy Craft Supplies," and there's a large section of the pie chart that says, "Oh, pretty! I must have this." And then there's this smaller portion over here that says, "Things I Actually Need." Now, when we sneak peeked this sticker to everyone, I saw a few comments out there that said that. 
um, the things I actually need portion of the pie chart needed to be even smaller than what it was. But um, that's kind of fun and funny. You can put that maybe on your crafty laptop or if you've got a water bottle. These vinyl stickers are nice and thick and um, they have a coating on them that is weather resistant as well. So um, yeah, these are super fun. Let me see if I can get a size for you here. It's about three inch, uh, three inches around that particular sticker. Now we have another sticker. I'm gonna show you this one. This is so you can identify yourself as a crafty person. I love this sticker that has the um, little elements in it. We've got a heat tool, a scissors, a colored pencil, even some thread, a TE style ink pad down there in the corner, and even a glue bottle. And this one is also a three inch circle. When I go measure that down in the corner of my glass board, that's what it comes out as. So a couple of fun stickers for laptops, water bottles, maybe you have a notebook or a a suitcase, a crafty suitcase that you use to travel your supplies around in it would be fun to decorate that. All right, now we have, these are also stickers, but for a little bit different purpose. Um, many of these items, which I didn't mention earlier, were available at our Stamp Joy um, in-person event in the fall and may also have been available for our virtual class participants to purchase last fall. Um, now we're just releasing these for everyone to purchase. So I'll try to make note of which items were um, previous re previously released and where you would have gotten those. These two stickers and these envelope seals were all part of our uh, Stamp Joy event in the fall, both virtual and in person. So. Uh, some of these you might already have, or maybe you want to grab them for crafty friends as little gifts, um, or maybe you need to restock your envelope seals. We have these with the Tailored Expressions mission on them, which is to share joy. These are a great little envelope seal to put on all of your outgoing cards. Fun, rainbow, cute. All right, put those back in here. Then let's talk about a couple other products. These were also available at Stamp Joy in person and for our virtual class attendees uh, this past fall. And these are little posters that we've designed for your craft space. I love, I'm gonna take them out of the sleeves just because they get a little bit of a glare on them when they're in the sleeve. Um, but again, we like our humor here. And so we've come up with these humorous, posters that you can display in your craft space. We have small um, wooden display stands that you can purchase separately if you wanna be able to keep that poster sitting up on your desktop, you can do that. Uh, each poster is sized four by six, and this one says, my craft room style is best described as, there appears to have been a struggle. <laughs> this is how I, I feel every time I craft is, uh, I'm like a tornado that just goes through my space and I'm inevitably working on this small six by six square when I have a gigantic desk filled with mess. Uh, so when I'm done, yes, it appears to have been a struggle in the room. <laughs> so that one's kind of fun and funny. These are printed on a really thick kind of tag board style material. So uh, not just regular cardstock, more of a poster board material. And then this one says, so there I was, the smartest person in the room. Then again, it was my craft room and I was the only one in there. <laughs> Have you guys seen the shirt or the saying that says something like, um, I needed expert advice, so I asked myself, or something like, uh, yes, I talked to myself, I needed expert advice or something along those lines. I like that one too. Um, but these are the two options for posters that we have. Now let's talk about this. This is the uh, final item from the release today that was available previously at Stamp Joy, uh, both in person and at our virtual class uh, pass that we had last fall. Uh, we've had lots of talk about this on the Tailored Expressions fan page. Many of our members have these and they've been sharing how they uh, set up these pages. But this is a a Facebook Live journal, or if you're watching on YouTube, it's a YouTube Live journal. Uh, it does say Facebook Live at the bottom, but um, a cute little cover front and back. These are laminated, high quality um, 
cover with the spiral coil binding in them. These are plastic coils, not metal, which was important to me. Sometimes I feel like the metal coils, if I am traveling with this or I wanna take it, keep it in my purse and maybe I am working on filling out the pages while I'm on vacation or something, um, I didn't want to have the metal uh, binding on the side that gets squished um, when I pack it up in my bag. So uh, that's kind of the uh, little details that you'll find in this journal. And then when you open it up, I'm gonna turn to a blank page so we can start by showing you that. There are 50 pages in here and they are printed front and back on really nice um, paper. It has a good feel to it, a nice thickness. Um, let me see if I can show you the back of, so I did write and stamp on this front page, which we'll talk about a little bit later um, as I'm making my cards. These are the cards we're gonna be making today in the live. So I just went ahead and journaled those cards out so you could see kind of my thought process as I would fill out the Facebook Live journal myself. Um, but you can see here, I did write and stamp on that front page and you cannot, maybe a teeny bit over here where I stamped the ink, you can see through, um, but it doesn't bleed through the paper um, and make those back pages unusable. So you have 50 sheets in here, which equates to 100 live sessions if you're using uh, one kind of page per live session. There's a date at the top, the teacher's name that you can put in, and then you can write out your project description, the products that were used, the colors. I put a few little swatches over here of cardstock so that I could keep track of the visual or have a more of a visual of the colors that I used on the project. And then I put down in the notes section th some of the things that this uh, kind of color combination or stamp set product that I used pairs well with. Um, and then for something more simple, here's another thing you could try. So just filling that out um, kind of as the live goes on with whatever is meaningful for your own crafting. And I know that some people you wanna have this just perfect. So a lot of people I've seen have filled out little post-it notes and kind of placed them in the spaces. And then maybe while you're watching TV or you're taking a trip, you can fill those out or stamp the colors in nicely so you don't feel like you have to do it in the moment that the live is going on. You can simply take some notes and then transfer it to your, um, your pretty journal. So, um, yeah, I think I covered, I know I've also seen some people talk about how they purchased a live journal for each teacher. So at Tailored Expressions, we have one for, you could have one for Taylor, and then we also have Susan and Heather who do their own lives on Thursdays. So if you wanted to separate it by teacher, maybe that's how your brain remembers projects. I know Taylor did this one, so I'll go back and look in the book that I have and see if I can find all those details for that project. Uh, let's see, I do have some questions here, so I will see if I can answer those. I've got somebody asking about the little pictures that I did, and that was something that I thought was kind of fun. I know there are lots of different ways to do this, so if others, um, I don't know if Isis is on today, but she had shared how she puts pictures in her book as well. I'd love to hear how she does hers, because I know you can just print those pictures off, or if you take screenshots during the live, you can print them off on your color printer. Um, what I decided to do was I purchased one of these little, uh, this is a Kodak product, and it is a little photo printer, so you can um, plug it in and it pairs to your phone through Bluetooth, and then you can take pictures from directly from your phone and print them out on these little two by three photo paper sheets. So there's no toner or anything to replace in here. I will say that um, the color is not the best. Um, you're not gonna get, you might get more true color if you're printing from a color printer. Um, but that's why this kind of helps me picture over here. These are the colors that I used on this project down here. So hopefully that makes sense, but you can print them out in, um, other other ways as well. This is just the one I want to say, what was the name of this? Whitney can probably post the link. I've got it on Amazon um, and it was Kodak. Um, gosh, I forget the name of it now. 
Uh, Whitney will have that in the links. So that is the story on the Facebook Live Journal, and it is now available to purchase. So this next item is actually not something new at Tailored Expressions. It's just a new design of a product that we've had for a while. So this is our microfiber uh, suede, micro suede cleaning cloth. And every so often we get uh, kind of creative and we like to do a new design for our cleaning cloth. So the previous design we had been using for a little over a year, I think, and it has now sold out. So we decided to replace it with a new one. And what better than this uh, cute little rainbow design inside the arcs of the rainbow. It has different say sayings. We have live colorfully. Rainbow is my favorite color. Roy G. Biv forever. Um, rainbow all the things. So you can use that to spritz a little bit of our stamper spritz and then you can wipe that across your uh, stamps. You can even use it to uh, wash your stencils if you have alcohol and you want to spray that on your stencils and use the cloth to uh, wipe it off. You can use it for that as well. Um, let's see, do I have the measurement? I think it's 12 by 12. Yes, the cloth measures 12 by 12. Okay, Whitney got the link up there for the mini printer. Thank you, Whitney. And let's look at the last couple of things. So those of you that received our advent calendar this past year, we do that every December where you get to open a different gift leading up to Christmas. These two items will look familiar to you. They did come in our advent calendar and were much requested to bring out for everyone to purchase. So this is the card makers quick reference. It's a magnet. So you can see the back here. It is magnetic. It is not a strong enough magnet to stick down to our magnetic glass board, just to give you a heads up on that, but it will stick to, let's say you have a metal cabinet or something something uh, where you can hang your things in your craft room. This would be a great little quick reference to hang up um, near your crafting station. So you can see the measurements here are um, for an A2 card base, both vertical and horizontal. You have your A2 card front size and then the incremental layering sizes for the A2 size. And then we did the exact same thing for mini slim. I know this mini slim is one that um, if you don't make a lot of mini slim cards, this size might not be embedded in your brain just yet. So uh, this will come in handy um, a lot, or at least it has for me. So these are available for purchase. Another great little gift to buy for your crafty friends. Uh, maybe you're having people over and you want a quick little um, table gift to give. This would be a fun one to grab. And then last but not least, we have our Let's Stick Together glue tube. And this is just a great little um, kind of fine detailed tip on the glue that you can get uh, if you just grab in quickly and you wanna maybe just adhere a few rhinestones or take it on a trip with you and not pack your whole glue press or your big glue bottle. Uh, these are really great. Um, easy to squeeze and easy to use. So that's the glue tube. All right, you guys, any questions about what I've shared? I'm gonna get to crafting with you and I'll bring in the project that I'm gonna make today. I kind of already shared that in the um, page, my first page of the Facebook Live Journal. And here is what that project looks like in person. Well, I guess not really in person, but um, a little bit bigger than in this tiny picture in the corner. So I grabbed one of my favorite release products from our Easter release last year. Can you guys believe Easter's gonna be here soon? We have an Easter release coming um, in a few weeks, and so you guys will get to see more Easter products. Uh, it's a little bit early this year. I, it's kind of interesting how Ash Wednesday is also Valentine's Day. Um, and then, yeah, I think the last weekend in March is Easter. But I decided to grab one of my favorite releases from, or favorite products from the Easter release last year and show you a couple different ways to use that. So whether you're making an Easter card or you just wanna make something like a thanks, or perhaps I did this one as well, a hello card. 
uh, this would be a great option. And I wanted to give it a little bit different look than, um, than what I typically do. So typically I would stamp this in a color and then stencil it, but today we are going to be coloring, using colored pencils on toffee cardstock. So that is a fun technique and it's something that I don't often think to do. So you can really get those colored pencils to sit on top of the colored cardstock and really give you a nice, soft, pretty look. I will be using the uh, this uh, bundle of Prismacolor pencils. Actually, I have one that's still in the package. If you attended our Stamp Joy virtual event last year, uh, that this you can see here, it says really small 2023. This package uh, bundle of pencils was from our event last spring. And so if you attended that, you may have already purchased these. If not, this product is currently in our retirement sale. So 30% off these six colorful pencils, uh, Prismacolor pencils. And also if you are part of our, our current virtual event, um, you can get an additional 10% off on all of our retirement items. So a great time to look in that retirement category and you will find these colored pencils that I'm gonna be using today already bundled for you. Um, then that stamp and stencil that I'm going to be using, it's called He First Loved Us. Now it has a sentiment in the center of it, but I wanted to show some other uses for this that may not be Easter, um, this particular sentiment in the center is easily removable. So if you don't want to use that, you can simply set it aside and you can just use this beautiful um, floral vine border around the outside, which is what we're going to be doing on today's cards. Now on a couple of, or on one of the cards, this one, I also used the stencil. So the stencil fills in the greenery vine with flowers and you can choose to do those with your Bitty Blender brush and get multiple different colors of flowers, which you see I did here and then I colored over them with colored pencils on this particular card. Now on this card, I did not use the flower stencil and I cut out my own die cut flowers and placed them in and among those vines. And then let me show you before we move into creating, I'm gonna show you one more idea for using this set. This one is just a really simple idea. And again, you don't have to use that sentiment in the center. You could use the thanks or the hello uh, that I used on the other two cards. But this was just a really easy, simple way to create a set of cards. And you can see, do you guys see that shadow that I created on the, um, the vine stamp? If we have time at the end of the live, I'm gonna show you how to quickly and easily do this. And again, I did not use the flower layer of the stencil on this one. I only used the vine. So let's go ahead and we'll get started. I've done enough talky talky. Now it's time to create. So we're gonna start with that piece of toffee cardstock and I am going to grab my used version of the he first loved us, and we're gonna set this up in the mini Misty. I'll put my toffee card stock down there at the bottom, and then I'm gonna grab just this outer piece and line it up on top of my card stock. I'm gonna actually move my magnet over to the side just a little bit so this fits nicely on there. And then I'm going to stamp this in sugar cube ink on the toffee cardstock. All right. I am going to grab a baby wipe. Sometimes with these pigment ink pads, it's hard to avoid getting the edges of the stamp with ink on them. So I like to just take a little baby wipe and kind of wipe that off to make sure that I don't accidentally get those edges that I don't want on my project. All right, now we'll go ahead and put this down and don't stress, just press. We'll 
We'll do this one more time to get a nice even coating of that sugar cube. And then we're going to use the sugar cube inked um, image as kind of a guide to coloring with our colored pencils. Okay, so we'll go ahead and pull that out. You can see stamped beautifully in that sugar cube ink and then we'll set that aside for now. Actually, since I've got this baby wipe out, I'm gonna go ahead and wipe my stamp in case we have time at the end and I can show you that kind of shadowed stamping that I did on the other sample, then at least my stamp will be clean. All right. Now I'm going to bring you guys in a little bit closer so you can see this better. A lot closer. There we go. We're going to take these Prismacolor pencils then. I'm actually going to set aside the pinks. Uh, since I did my own die cut flowers, I won't be using the pinks for this particular card. Um, instead, we'll be using mostly the greens and a little bit of this darker bluish green color to just add a few flicks to the, um, the background. So I'm actually going to come in here and just start coloring with this lighter green right over the top of the sugar cube ink. And I'm not going to hit the branches. I'm really only grabbing onto the leaves and coloring those. Uh, one, that will keep it simple. And two, those lines are pretty thin. And so trying to color over the top of those thin lines with this colored pencil is probably not going to yield great results. So I'll stick to the more open spaces or solid spaces, I should say. And this is just going to give us a really pretty soft look as we finish this coloring with the lighter color. And if you're wondering, can I color on toffee cardstock without stamping sugar cube ink? You sure can. People color um, imagery on toffee cardstock all the time. Craft cardstock, if you're not familiar with tailored expressions, um, color names yet, then we name all of our colors after foods, which is why I'm calling this toffee card stock. I love toffee. Mm, that's going to make me hungry now. So as I was driving to work today, I was starting to think about uh, my kids are both having or all having their uh, friendship parties is what they call them. They're not Valentine parties anymore. They're having their friendship parties and I uh, need to make a Valentine box for Henry to collect his Valentines in. And I need to finish up their little treats that they're going to be giving. So I got to thinking, my kids can't bring food treats to school. That's not allowed. And so I like to do a little food treat um, and just give that at the office um, or neighbors or um, people that I encounter on Valentine's Day. I'm curious if you have made Valentine treats this year and what are you giving? What are you doing for your Valentine treats? All right, so that is the first color. I can hold it up even a little bit closer. You can see that nice soft green that we colored over top of the, uh, the stamped image. And now I'm gonna take that darker green color and just start to, this is more kind of a match for spearmint, I would say this color is. And I'm just gonna go ahead and start adding just a little bit of shading at the base of each of the leaves. I'll hold it up here so you can see kind of what I'm doing up there in the top corner, um, giving it, giving these leaves some more dimension. Oh, Charlie, you're doing cake pops for Rhett. That's so fun. Are they Chiefs cake pops? <laughs> I 
It's hard to color and look at comments at the same time I'm determining. I should get a screen that I don't have to look up at and instead can just look down at and then I can probably follow comments a little bit better. <clears throat> Um, another question I wanted to ask today, so this one's important, here at the office, we are having a, a potluck for Valentine's Day, and so we have to sign up to bring something. I haven't signed up yet, and so that was my other question for today. What would you bring to the potluck? If you were coming to the TE potluck for Valentine's Day, what would you bring? <laughs> I need some ideas. I haven't actually looked at what everyone else has signed up for, so I need to do that also. But I'm always looking for a good, um, looking for a, a good idea, something new, different that I don't usually make. I feel like I always go back to the same things. All right, let me hold this one up. This is the final color, which is kind of a bluish um, green color that I'm putting in very sparingly to add that final bit of dimension around the vine image. Having really sharp pencils to do this is always better than dull pencils, so if you're using Prismacolor pencils, I can show you my favorite uh, pencil sharpener, and it is, again, something that I just picked up on Amazon. It's called uh, Teagall, and it is, let me see if I can bring it in here. Here's what that looks like. Of course it came in teal, but it's spelled T apostrophe G-A-A-L, and that is a great colored pencil sharpener for these kind of colored pencils these um, wax base tips and you don't want of course these are a little more spendy so you really don't want to be wasting colored pencil by chipping it off inside your pencil sharpener Okay, I think I got it. Pull that up one last time so you can see the dimension we got by coloring over those images with these colored pencil colors. And now we're gonna go ahead and die cut this piece. So I'm gonna move you guys out again and bring in my die cut machine. I have the additional A2 layer stacklets that I'll be using and um, I kind of marked which size I needed with a piece of tape here. So we'll pull that one off. But I mentioned during our supply walkthrough the other day why I love these A2 layer stacklets. And of course they're rectangles. So can we cut rectangles with our paper cutter? Yes, we can. But here's why I love these. Because you can take this stamped image that you want to cut equally down and you can perfectly position so maybe your stamping wasn't perfectly centered, and mine wasn't, it looks like. Um, and you can perfectly center the um, design that you've already worked on with your die so that you know you're not cutting a little bit off of here and a little bit off of here until, um, oops, all of a sudden you've cut too much off of one end and then you have to redo the whole thing. So that's what I love these for, is for centering up your designs but they're also great for just creating those perfect layers and not having the, or having the nice kind of die cut edge on all of your cardstock makes your cards look even more polished than if you're just cutting with a paper trimmer. one little piece here that wants to stay. I just gotta get my die pick under there. There we go. 
All right, now, I know I use this word a lot, but it is a word that I think about a lot when I'm crafting, and that is dimension. So again, I wanted to add more dimension to this plain piece of paper that we've worked on now. And so I took my toffee ink pad, and we're going to just blend around the outside and through the middle of this piece here. I love that I can just blend directly on this glass board surface. If you did not grab one of our large magnetic glass boards when they were available for pre-order, um, we do have the smaller kind of travel sized 9 by 12 magnetic glass boards available always in the store. So you can always grab one of those, pull it out easily when you're ready to do some blending or stenciling. All right, so this time we're gonna start in the middle and I'm just gonna kind of circular motion around in the middle, leaving a nice kind of glow around the inner portion of the frame so that when we put that thanks die cut over the top, you're gonna see a nice shadow of that toffee color on the outside. We're gonna go ahead and clean got my alcohol bottle. This is from our stencil cleaning kit, another great one to have around. And this is the cleaning cloth that comes with the stencil cleaning kit. So if you don't want to dirty your pretty one, you could just use this one. <laughs> okay, so let me bring this back in and we're going to go ahead and lay out the little flowers and leaves next. Actually, I think we're just going to do the flowers. These came, the flowers came from the How Does Your Garden Grow set, and the leaves are from Little Bits Mixed Blooms. So I picked this, these, this leaf style because it went perfectly with the leaf style of the vines, and then these flowers look great, kind of perfect sized to mix in around this vine. Now I cut them from three different colors. I did fruit punch, pink champagne, and then just sugar cube. And I'm gonna add again the dimension, we're gonna talk about that again, um, by adding some color to these. So I'm actually going to use my peaches and cream ink. You can see I already have this one finished here. I'm gonna use peaches and cream ink on the white cardstock. I could have just cut these from peaches and cream cardstock, but I think it gives you more dimension if you blend the edges of these flowers than if you just cut them from solid peaches and cream cardstock. I'm using my detail blender brushes, and I'll do a few more because I don't know exactly what sizes and um, colors I'm going to use. I think this one is done. Yep, that one's done. All right, I think five should be enough. Now let's go ahead with our, pull some of these fruit punch pieces in here. A few bigs and a few smalls. And then I'm going to highlight those with a little bit of the fruit punch ink. Uh, somebody asked if the brayer will be back in stock soon. Um, that was one that was tough to guess on because I feel like it's just one of those supplies that um, longtime crafters probably have in their craft room because it's something we used more often back in the earlier days of stamping. But there are some cool techniques you can do with a brayer and um, we're going to do that in our Stamp Joy class, so I'm sure that's why you're asking. But we will do our very best to get more brayers in stock, so it likely will not be before the discount period ends on Friday, but um, if we can get them from our supplier, I can't recall if we ordered everything we could or not, 
um, but if we can get them from our supplier, we certainly will. And we do still have a good amount of time before the, the event, so. Okay, there is some fruit punch on fruit punch. And then I'm gonna pull in a few of these flowers that I cut from the pink champagne. And I'm gonna use some of the leftover ink that's on my glass board here, if I can get these two flowers to separate. And we're just gonna pull that on to give it a really light dusting of the pink color. So those don't appear quite as red as the other ones, but they still have some nice dimension to them. Ooh, crock pot lasagna. I do, I have not done this for a while. Last time we had a potluck, maybe I should just bring that because I feel like the whole um, crock pot disappeared and everybody seemed to like it. So I made this um, Fiesta corn dip that you put on tortilla chips. See, that's why I always feel like I bring the same thing because I was like, okay, well, people liked that. I'll just bring that again. Um, but yeah, then sometimes I feel like it's so predictable. It's always the same thing. Okay, before we do, actually, I can go ahead and do the green leaves so they're ready. I have my spearmint ink with cardstock that I cut from mint julep and spearmint. So I've got both of the colors here. And we'll just take a little bit of the ink and give it some nice color here on each of the leaves. I think I'm only using six leaves, so I don't need to go too overboard, but I want three of each color. Um, just in case you missed this, I saw another question fly by. The flowers were from How Does Your Garden Grow? And the leaves are from Little Bits Mixed Blooms. Uh, that also, that set also has a little flower in it, but it was just a little too big for this um, design that I was doing. So I only used the leaves from the mixed blooms. Okay, let's clean up again. Quick, just spritz a little bit of alcohol on there and we can get rid of that ink. All right, so let's go ahead and lay this out now. I'm gonna just follow my example that I did previously because that makes life easier, but I did sit and fuss with these, the placement of these flowers for quite a while, so, um, that's easy to do. Everyone, every crafter knows, you know, you have to have a balance of color and you want to have a balance of size and placement. So And my nails don't want to pick them up, so I'm having to drag them off of my table to pick them up. My younger daughter has gotten very into doing her nails lately, and so we had a deal for Christmas. I We went to the nail salon together, her older sister, Maddie, and Charlie and I, and I would pay for the nails that they wanted to get. It was part of Christmas fun for them. Um, and then the deal was, you know, when your nails come off and um, you want something new, you have to save up your money and do that yourself. And she had not saved up enough money. So when we went back to the nail salon, she had to just get her nails taken off and not have new nails done and you guys you would have thought I was the worst mom ever in the history of moms for not letting her get those nails and paying for them so oh my anyway now that now when I think about my nails that's what I remember because I was getting my nails done and I was just 
horrible because you know I get to get my nails done and she doesn't so the lessons we teach our children right <laughs> okay so now that I have these flowers laid out I'm gonna grab some press and seal uh, you guys have seen me use this before sometimes I use um, post-it removable labeling tape but this time I've got more uh, surface area and my post-it removable labeling tape doesn't quite fit the full um, space here. So I'm just going to take a piece of that press and seal and I'm going to drop it over my project and press down on those flowers so that when I pick up my press and seal, I can grab, it's going to grab those flowers right where I want to place them back on again. Well, that one didn't get pressed hard enough. I'll put him back down. All right, so yeah, you gotta make sure that the press and seal is grabbing onto each of the flowers before you start lifting up off of the cardstock. That one really does not wanna stay. Come on, dude. We're gonna get to talking to our craft supplies today. Okay, I promise this worked perfectly when I did it before, but now I think I'm gonna go grab my post-it removable labeling tape. Okay, if these are not going to stay, let's see if I can get these guys over here. Not really. So, sorry guys. I'm gonna make you watch while I have to place these down one more time and then we're gonna use the post-it labeling tape instead. So, sometimes the best laid plans don't work. Trisha, you ended up your daughter ended up buying a kit from Amazon to do them herself and now you have a full service nail salon in your house okay maybe that's what I need to encourage um, saving up the money for is the the um, kit to do it at home and we do have the shellac kit at home but uh, she doesn't like the shellac because it doesn't last on her nails as long as she would like it to so to make this a little bit bigger piece, I am going to take and put these two together. And I've given myself excess, hopefully, so I can hang on to the edges of this while I place it over the top. I might need to shift just a teensy bit here and here and here. And then we'll place this down. And then pick those up. Hopefully, everybody cross your fingers. This time, it's going to work. So far, so good. Got it. So I'm just pulling up these, the post-it labeling tape and my flowers have now stuck to the back so that I can put some adhesive on there. I'm gonna start with foam adhesive and cut a few little pieces off. And we'll go ahead and pop up a couple of these. Of course, again, you're thinking about balance, so you don't wanna pop up ones that are you know, right next to each other. Pick a few of them that are balanced out so we're going to go with the top two corners and then this one down at the bottom and then the rest of them are going to get a little bit of liquid glue and sometimes it helps to just let that liquid glue get a little bit tacky like almost dry a little bit before you try to put it back down on the project because then it's gonna stick down to the cardstock a little bit better. So let me peel up the backing papers from the ones that have foam on them. And 
and then we'll let that get a little bit tacky there. I'm gonna get some things ready here to start stamping my sentiment. So uh, while my glue gets a little bit tacky, I've got my get the word out thanks is the sentiment stamp that I'll be using. And I'm gonna set that up in my mini Misty with the guava cardstock is what we're gonna stamp that onto, or actually we are embossing it with white embossing powder. So I'm just getting that set up here off to the side so it's ready to go. And I think we should be tacky enough now. So let's flip this back over and then you can see through the design. That, that is one of the downsides of the um, post-it removable labeling tape because you can't quite see through it as well as you can the other, um, the press and seal, but hopefully see through it well enough to get my flowers right where I want them. Make sure all of it is sticking as I peel back. There we go. You guys, you know, I just thought of something I could bring to the potluck. My niece, Whitney's daughter, Izzy, started selling Girl Scout cookies this past weekend, and I got myself about eight boxes, I think, so I could just put out some Girl Scout cookies at the potluck. Everybody loves Girl Scout cookies, right? Okay, I am looking for these guys. This is one of the things that I put in my Facebook Live journal because I wanted to remember that this color combo that I'm using really pairs well with the gold matte enamel dots in our collection. So each of these flowers is going to get an enamel dot in the center and I like to pick those up with my die pick, kind of place that little enamel dot on the end so that I can see it and I'm not fumbling with my fingers, and then I hold it down as I push it into place on the flower. And that keeps me from, I can't tell you how many enamel dots I've probably fumbled with and dropped on the floor, and then they end up in my hair or on the bottom of my shoe. It is nice to have the adhesive back on them, but it does make them a little more tricky to apply them right where you want them because as soon as you place that down that um, that backing just sticks wherever you put it keep glancing at the clock thinking oh no i'm gonna hold you after today got a few more steps to go on this this guy you can kind of push it into the center too if you don't quite get it perfectly centered. So if you haven't picked up on this yet, the smaller flowers are getting the smallest enamel dot and then the larger flowers are going to get the medium sized enamel dot. Yes! Paula, you are my person. I put Thin Mints in the freezer as well. And they are just better that way. <laughs> I love a frozen minty Thin Mint. So, and nobody else in my family likes mints or mint flavored. So I buy those just for me. And I bought one box for work and one box for home. <laughs> All right. So there we have our floral um, kind of viney outline or border created, and we can do our sentiment embossing to finish this off. Like I said, this is the get the word out thanks. I'm going to condition my paper with my powder tool, and then we'll use Versamark to stamp the thanks. A 
We'll get stamp it twice to make it nice. We'll do one more layer here of the Versamark. And then I've got my piece of scratch paper and my white powder. Ooh, Lynn. Lynn beat my two boxes with her nine boxes of Thin Mints. <laughs> I love that. Ooh, Sherry, I just saw your comment from earlier about potato mac salad. You know what my favorite thing about potlucks is we name all the foods that aren't really salads, we name them salads. Like jello salads, uh, pretzel strawberry salad, um, yeah, potato mac salad. We just want to make ourselves feel healthy at potlucks. We just name them all salads. <laughs> Okay, I'm doing it. I'm grabbing my mini mitts. My paper's a little small, so here we go. <laughs> I forgot about my mini mitts until my fingers started to burn. <clears throat> so this is one of the things that I do use my micro suede cleaning cloth for because it doesn't make it dirty at all. Keeping one nice clean cloth to buff the powder off of the paper once you've done your embossing, it brings back that nice um, intense color to the cardstock. And we're going to pull in the die cut machine here, see if I can find, as I said, I am a tornado crafter and so now I don't know where my thanks die is. <laughs> it can't have gone far. Oh, I found it. Okay. Sometimes the harder you look for something, the more it hides. And I always worry that that's going to happen to me on a, a live. That I'm going to be frantically panicking to find something and it's just going to, of course, it's probably sitting right in front of me. Okay, so here's this. Poke out all these little pieces from inside the letters. And then I'm gonna add some foam tape to the back. I'm using the one by three foam tape. And again, I'm gonna fringe my foam so that I can get some of those smaller pieces and fit them onto these letters more easily, so. Hopefully my nails cooperate here and I can peel the backing off of this easily. I'm getting there. Okay. We'll bring in my piece here and we'll go ahead and adhere this. So that um, blending that we did in the center is going to set off our thanks nicely. 
There we go. Press that into place. I have a couple of pre-cut pieces here that we can adhere. I have my white card base and then I have my uh, stitched stacklets that I am going to adhere to the card base just with a little bit of tape runner. Get that centered on there. Tack that down. And then I'm gonna use foam tape on the back of this. So these are one by three thin foam, which I love. And we'll just pop this center piece up. Now the particular uh, A2 layer stacklets that I use to cut this out happen to fit perfectly inside the stitch line of this frame. So we're still gonna see the nice stitch around the outside of the frame and pop up that panel in the center. Now the only last thing I have to do is adhere those leaves, but we are already past our time. And so I am gonna do that off camera, but you can see here where I just added those leaves in. And I think even on these leaves, I did take a little bit of that uh, darker blue colored pencil from the bundle and I just kind of added a few more detailed flick marks. If I can hold this up into the camera more, you guys can see what that looks like. So if you like a little bit of extra detail, you could add that in with the colored pencils as well. All right, so let me bring back in then the projects we I created with this particular stamp and stencil combo, some of them using the stencil and some of them only using the stamp. If you guys wanna grab a screenshot of all the projects together, here's your opportunity. And I think there will be future opportunities to show you how to do this stamp shifting if you haven't seen that in uh, past lives. I know I've showed it before, but it is kind of a fun technique. Okay, I'm gonna come back to you and say a proper farewell. All right, thank you guys for tuning in today. For our Stamp Joy shoppers, your discount continues through Friday. Um, also, a little heads up that our retirement sale that is currently going on, um, it ends February 12th. So make sure you're checking that sale category if there's anything you want and you've been maybe waiting to pull the trigger on, just know that those items will disappear from the website on February 12th. So especially if you're shopping now for your Stamp Joy things with your discount, now would be a great time to grab what you want from the retirement category before it's gone. All right, that's all I have for today. Heather will be here on Thursday. She's back from her vacation. I'm sure she's super inspired and ready to go get back into paper crafting. So I can't wait to see what she comes up with. And yeah, I hope you guys have a wonderful week. I'll see you on Tuesday next week.